All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50+, plus, this is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. The BMW i4 M50. It's 100% electric and 100% BMW. Experience the power of over 500 horses stampeding at a whisper as BMW M-engineered handling takes you through every twist and turn. The complete suite of intuitive technology keeps you connected. The pure performance keeps your heart racing. The BMW i4 M50. Silence has never said so much. BMW, the ultimate electric driving machine. Hey, everyone. This is Jody Sweeten from the podcast How Rude, Tanneritos. I've been needing a quick getaway with my family, and the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe is the perfect vehicle to take us there. It has standard third-row seating, so I'm able to pack my entire family, plus pets, in the car while also having enough room for our camping essentials. Available H-Track all-wheel drive will get us through any dirt trails, and available dual wireless charging pads will ensure we never have to worry about getting stuck with a dead phone in the middle of nowhere. Visit HyundaiUSA.com. Or call 562-314-4603 for more details. Hyundai, there's joy in every journey. I won't let my body outweigh, outweigh everything that I'm made of. Won't spend my life trying to change. I'm learning to love who I am. I am strong, I feel free. I know every part of me is beautiful. And I will always outweigh If you feel it, put your hands in the air Show some love to the new while you're there Let's take it one day at a time Cause you and I outweigh Happy Saturday, LA fam. Amy here. And if you're struggling with constant thoughts about food, you are not alone. I've been there. Now again, I am not the expert here. And it is just me. I actually don't have an expert joining me today. But I can share some things that worked for me to help minimize the never-ending thoughts about food that I had for years and years and years. Now, first thing I want to mention is something that I've said before, and I'll keep saying it. And Katherine Hansen taught me this, eat adequately. (laughs) We need to make sure that we are eating enough food. If we are restricting and we start nourishing ourselves well, we have a much better chance of lessening the food thoughts. Thinking about food all the time can be a big red flag that we aren't eating enough. And sometimes I literally have to ask myself, have I been eating adequately today? Have I been eating adequately this week? I have a little conversation with myself up in my brain and I try to work through whether or not my body is deprived. The relationship between food restrictions, the brain, and food cravings is really, really complex. So I can only speak to my experience And restriction causes me to think about food more often. The less I restrict and the more I actually nourish my body, the less thoughts about food I have. When I had a lot of strict rules regarding what I would and wouldn't allow myself to eat, it took up so much space in my brain. I had to get rid of my off-limits foods list and learn to trust my body. I know that's way easier said than done, but when I allow myself to enjoy certain foods that I can't stop thinking about— and I find the thoughts popping up less and less, that's showing me, well, this is really working. And it's essential that we meet our body's needs and again, eat adequately. It's also good to acknowledge and celebrate when our brains aren't thinking about food. I'm gonna read something that was posted on a Brain Over Binge blog about noticing when you're not thinking about food. I know it can sometimes feel that you're thinking about food all the time, but I know that there are moments in the day where you're not thinking about it. There are times when you're focusing fully on your work or on someone else in your life. I want you to notice that and see that your brain does have the capacity to go in other directions. 
Now, I realize that looking for those moments that you're not thinking about food and then possibly saying, wow, this is great. I'm not thinking about food right now can possibly have the unintended effect of making you then think about food. So try to do this in a way that you're just observing your mind in a relaxed way instead of constantly judging whether or not you're thinking about food in that particular moment. When you do notice the food thoughts, you can do things to redirect your attention back to the present moment and focus on whatever you're doing or whatever you do want to focus on instead of food. You may need to refocus a lot at first, but it will get easier over time. You could compare this to a meditation practice. When you do a meditation practice, your mind naturally wanders, and then you bring your attention back to a focal point or a mantra. And when you first start a meditation practice, you may need to refocus your attention on the mantra or the focal point hundreds of times, even within just a minute. But it gets easier over time, and your brain starts to stay more and more focused on what you want to be focusing on. That's the end of the part I'm reading. I just pulled a section from a blog. Again, Brain Over Binge is an amazing resource. But Healthline also had an entire article dedicated to this topic, and they mentioned that we can learn to let the thoughts pass. So if we notice these thoughts arise, but know that we aren't really hungry, we can proactively take our mind another direction by doing one or multiple of the following things. Pause and take a break from what you're doing. Stand up and stretch. Take a walk. Drink a glass of water. Read something that interests you. Work on your favorite hobby. Meditate for a few minutes. There's awesome apps you can use for that. Journal about how you're feeling. And it doesn't say this one from Healthline, but I'm throwing this in. Do you have a friend or a loved one that you can call and see how they're doing? Check in on them. Switch it up in your head to not make it about you, but about someone else. You may need to proactively take your mind another direction many, many times many, many times before it starts to become more effortless and the food thoughts lessen. You know, I also learned from Brain Over Binge that your brain learns that the thoughts you focus attention on are the ones that are important to you. And it will keep producing those thoughts over and over. When I first learned that, my mind was blown. I was fascinated. I was like, oh, wow. Okay, no wonder I keep having these thoughts over and over. My brain thinks that these thoughts are very important to me. However, When you stop focusing attention on certain thoughts, the brain will learn that those thoughts are less important to you. And in return, the food thoughts will stop ruling your brain and your life. So hopefully some of this is at least just helpful to first of all, know that you're not alone if you're someone that is thinking about food all of the time. And I think for me, it started in my teenage years when I started dieting and I started restricting and then my brain started freaking out and my brain was like, okay, I can remember thinking about food all through school, all through college. I felt like my friends could enjoy other things and I couldn't because I was just constantly thinking about food. I would go to bed thinking about food. I would wake up thinking about food. Of course, I didn't talk about food all the time because I also had the shame in my mind. Like, why am, why am I the one thinking about food all the time? And I knew I had a different relationship with food than some of my friends So I didn't really have anybody to talk to about it. So the thoughts just continued and continued and continued until, you know, I don't know, my late 30s. (laughs) So there is hope. If you're listening to this at a young age, there's hope for you. If you're listening to this right now and you are 50, 60, 70 years old, there is hope for you too. Thoughts about food do not have to rule your brain. And if you're serious about getting help with this or you have the resources, then talking to someone, a therapist, a registered dietitian that specializes in eating disorders, by the way, that can help walk you through this and come up with a meal plan so that you know that you're eating adequately. I know it's so hard to know, even if your body's hungry, you might be thinking, well, I don't even know how to tell if I'm hungry anymore. I mean, is thinking about food a sign that you're hungry? Okay, yes, potentially. But also, do you get headaches? Are you fatigued? Are you irritable? I mean... Sometimes I have to do what I do with my kids and I see how they're behaving and I'm like, oh shoot, when is the last time they ate? And I'm like, oh, they're acting that way because they're hungry. And I sort of have to sometimes check my attitude, my vibe (laughs) and realize, oh, I'm acting this way because my body needs food for sure. Like I can assess what I have consumed that day in that moment and know that I haven't eaten adequately. 
Remember, I told you, ask myself, have a little conversation with myself. Have I eaten enough today? And when the answer is no, I try to go make myself something that is full of nutrients that my body wants. And sometimes my body doesn't want the stuff that's full of the nutrients. It maybe wants something else, like a a cookie, something that I used to have completely off limits. But I, I, because I don't have any allergies or anything, I used to think that I did, but but I don't. I can allow all sorts of foods in. So paying attention to those cravings too, instead of dismissing them is important too, because I feel like if I am like, oh, I really shouldn't eat that cookie. Well, now I'm just going to think about the cookie until I have the cookie. And then thankfully I'm to a point now where just because I have one cookie doesn't mean I'm going to have five, six, seven, eight cookies. You can rewire your brain and there is hope for that. So hopefully Some of this stuff was was helpful if you are someone that is thinking about food all of the time. I hope y'all are having the day you need to have. And remember, a life without disordered eating outweighs everything. And just a heads up, I'm going to be doing a live event in Nashville for my Four Things podcast, and I would love to have you there. It's going to be like a night out with your girlfriends. And I was trying to think about what do I like from a night out with my girlfriends? I like laughter. I like sharing with each other encouragement. I love the connection. And then I normally get home from a girl's night out feeling refreshed, empowered, motivated. I feel seen. And that's my hope for the evening in Nashville that we're going to have at Franklin Theater. So if you want to join me and my friends and experts for honest conversations about knowing your worth and using your voice and building the confidence to have the life that you deserve, I deserve, we deserve, Again, I'm, I'm up there as, as one of you. I'm just facilitating it, hosting it. I've got the experts that are coming to really share with us. And then again, I, I can share my experience and certain things that I've learned along the way. But we are worthy of a good life. That's my theme that keeps popping up for me. Whenever I would think about this live, it was like, you are worthy, you are worthy. Because so many of my friends in our 40s, I've heard at our girls' nights, at our dinners, that they're not feeling worthy of a good life. And we are. So a link to the tickets is going to be in the show notes. Also, it'll be in my Instagram bio at Radio Amy, or you can go to franklintheater.com. All right. Bye. This is it. We've got an Amex Platinum Pro on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't seen anyone relax like this before in the Centurion Lounge. Is he connecting to complimentary Wi-Fi? Oh, my! Look at that! He is! And you will not believe where he's going next. The Amex dedicated card member entrance for the win! Unbelievable! When you get travel perks with Amex Platinum, you're part of the action. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex. Let me run this by my lawyer is a really helpful phrase to have in your back pocket. Legal Shield has been giving legal peace of mind for over 50 years. They connect you to a vetted law firm in your state for an affordable monthly fee. Want an experienced set of eyes on a contract's fine print, or you finally want to get that will done. Legal Shield has a dedicated group of lawyers who have your back, no matter what the future brings. Sign up today at LegalShield.com forward slash iHeart. PPLSI does not provide legal representation or advice. See a plan for complete terms. What's up, y'all? Janice Torres here. And I'm Austin Hankwitz. We're the hosts of Mind the Business, Small Business Success Stories, a podcast presented by iHeartRadio's Ruby Studios and Intuit QuickBooks. Join us as we speak with small business owners about the tools they use to turn their ideas into success. From finding that initial spark of entrepreneurship to organizing payments and invoices, we've got you covered. So follow and listen to Mind the Business, Small Business Success Stories on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts.